Assalamu alaikum, this is Dr. Hasna with Hasna's Natmi and today we're discussing the middle cranial fossa. Uh, as we've already talked about and if you haven't watched uh, my previous video, go ahead and click. We've talked about the anterior cranial fossa and now we're coming to the middle cranial fossa which is a little more complicated than the anterior cranial fossa but there's nothing that on this channel we will uh, find difficult. We are going to make this easy as well, alright? So in the middle cranial fossa, there are chiefly uh, two bones that are existing here that you're going to see. So that is the sphenoid bone that we've already discussed in the anterior cranial fossa and the temporal bone, alright? So what happens is your sphenoid bone has a lesser wing and a greater wing. So in the lesser wing, we all knew that it was in the anterior cranial fossa. This is the lesser wing of sphenoid and then this greater wing. This is the greater wing of the sphenoid bone, right? And then posteriorly it was joined by the temporal bone. Now the temporal bone also has two parts. There is the squamous part of the temporal bone and then there is this petrous part of the temporal bone. So here what you can see just posterior to the greater wing of the sphenoid, this is the squamous part of the temporal bone while this is the petrous part of the temporal bone. This is the apex of the petrous part, anterior surface, posterior surface and the superior border that is separating the anterior and posterior surface from each other. So that's how it goes. This is the petrous part, right? And in the center, you can see chiefly in the middle cranial fossa is the body of the sphenoid bone. So you can see this is the sphenoid bone, right? In the middle, there is the body. The body begins with a smooth area first that is known as the jugum sphenoidal. Posterior to that, whatever we're going to study is going to be included in the middle cranial fossa. So now that you have a brief overview of this situation, let's go ahead and talk about details of the middle cranial fossa. Let's begin from the median area, then we'll move to the lateral area where we'll talk about the foramens and in the end we will end it up with the boundaries uh, so you have an idea of what's happening. The first thing we saw in the previous video, I told you about the optic canals, right? So what is being transmitted in the optic canal? It is the optic nerve which is the second cranial nerve along with the ophthalmic artery. Between these two optic canals, over here is this surface, a grooved surface. This is known as the sulcus chiasmaticus. Uh, like superior to that, posteriorly will be lying your optic chiasma. Then uh, when you move even more posteriorly, you see this bone which is shaped like a saddle. Suppose I'm viewing this area of the bone from the side, you will see this. From in front, there is a projection, there is a hollow, and then from the back, there is a projection. This entire area is known as the cella tersica and it consists of one, two and three parts. The anterior projection is known as the tuberculum cellae. So over here you can see right over here this is the tuberculum cellae which is basically separating your uh, sulcus chiasmaticus from this fossa right here. All right, so this is the tuberculum cellae right here. What's so special about the tuberculum cellae is that on its lateral ends, the tuberculum cellae forms two processes because we had anterior clinoid processes. Obviously, there has to be some more clinoid processes. So this is the middle clinoid process. So uh, the tuberculum uh, cellae is basically like this. It's like this. There is a projection on both of its posterolateral ends. This is the middle and middle clinoid processes. If I show it to you here, they're joined uh, to the anterior clinoid process all right going posterior to that this hollow this uh, fossa that is formed is called the hypophysial fossa and it is known as that because it lodges the pituitary gland also known as the hypophysis cerebri all right this pituitary gland is lying in this hypophysial fossa going posterior to that this projection right here this one which is forming the posterior margin of the middle cranial fossa is known as the dorsum cellae and in the dorsum cellae, its two lateral ends are also projecting. These two are known as the, because there is a middle, there has to be another posterior clinoid processes. Now let's move on to the lateral part. In the lateral part, we have two bones, the greater wing of the sphenoid, and then posteriorly we have the temporal bone. Let's talk about the greater wing of the sphenoid. Firstly, the anterior most you see this fissure called the superior orbital fissure. Uh, the superior orbital fissure above is formed by the lesser wing, whereas below it is formed by the uh, greater wing. So superior orbital fissure is basically like this. This is from the lesser wing, and this is from the medial wing. You can see the medial part of the um, superior orbital fissure is a lot larger than the lateral part and it uh, is basically going to lead into your uh, orbit so you can see right here this where my pen is protruding from this is a superior orbital fissure it has some important structures passing through it uh, these are one passing from the lateral part then from the middle part and then from the medial part in the lateral part of the superior orbital fissure pass the LFT structures LFTs these are the L for the lacrimal nerve F for the frontal nerve 
T for the trochlear nerve, and S for the superior ophthalmic vein. Whereas in the middle part, we have the NOA structures, NOA structures. These are the nasociliary nerve, the oculomotor motor nerve, two divisions. And finally, A is for the abducent nerve, which is the sixth cranial nerve. The next we have the medial part is just is. I is for the inferior ophthalmic vein and S is for some sympathetic nerves that are around the internal carotid artery. Fine. So we're done with the superior orbital fissure. Now let's go a little posterior in the greater wing of the sphenoid. We'll see uh, these important foramens now. All right. First one is located in the anterior part of the wing uh, right here. You can see these two foramens are known as the foramen rotundum leading to the pterygopalatine fossa and in it are the branches of the trigeminal nerves of both sides. These are known as the maxillary nerve. These pass through the foramen rotundum. Next, we have posterolateral to the foramen rotundum. We have the foramen ovale. You can see on either side, the foramen ovales are quite oval and they're found a little posterolateral to the foramen rotundum. These are basically responsible for carrying the male structures m a l e m for the mandibular nerve which is v3 of the trigeminal nerve a is for the accessory meningeal artery l is for the lesser protrusal nerve and e is for the emissary vein and posterolateral to the foramen ovale we have these two tiny uh, foramens these are known as the foramen spinosum these consist of the two m's m square structures one m is for the meningeal vessels Second M is for the meningeal branch of the mandibular nerve. The mandibular nerve was uh, lying right here inside the uh, ovale foramen. It gave a branch, the meningeal branch, which passed through the foramen spinosum. All right, so these three foramens are located in a crescent shape. All right, there is one more uh, foramen that is lying at the junction between the uh, sphenoid and the uh, temporal bone right in the center right here. This is known as the foramen lacerum. All right. The foramen lacerum is basically going to be covered by cartilage, but it also it also has some structures passing across it or through its anterior wall. Uh, one of the structures is the internal corroded artery. Now let's move on talking about the next bone of the middle cranial fossa. This is the temporal bone. First, it has a squamous part. Basically, the squamous part and the sphenoid a greater wing are both lodging the temporal lobe of the brain all right because this is the temporal area this right here is the petrous temporal bone the anterior surface of the petrous temporal bone is going to be forming the posterior margin of your middle cranial fossa let's talk about this a little bit uh, the first thing that you see in the petrous temporal bone is its apex and just a little bit uh, behind that you'll see this groove this uh, you know bent area a ditch you'll see here this groove this bent area is known as the trigeminal cave or the trigeminal impression what is the significance of this it carries the trigeminal ganglion and the trigeminal ganglion is going to give the three branches of the trigeminal nerve v1 v2 v3 the v1 we've already talked about it runs in the superior orbital fissure v2 runs within the foramen rotundum the v3 uh, runs in the foramen ovale so from here they're all arising this is that impression so the, if this is the petrous temporal bone is apex right right about here there is this groove trigeminal cave so going laterally from this tree here is basically two grooves that are going to come on our way these two grooves are known as the uh, one is for the greater petrusal nerve one is for the lesser petrusal nerve all right uh, this is the greater petrusal nerve groove and it also there's a hiatus over here for it and this is basically going to be leading to the foramen lacerum, right? And then we have the lesser uh, petrusal nerves groove. They're leading to the foramen ovale, as you can see. So this is the groove for the lesser, while this is the groove for the uh, greater petrusal nerve. Going in more lateral to that, you'll see this bulging of the bone, this prominence in the bone. This is known as the arcuate eminence. Basically, what's happening is beneath the arcuate eminence, what you're not seeing, if I broke this bone and you viewed what was inside, it was a superior semicircular canal of your uh, ear. Uh, just lateral to this uh, prominence or anterolateral, you can say more specifically, this bone right here, this is uh, the part of the temporal bone called as tegment tympani. The tegment tympani is basically this continuous sloping bone and it is basically forming the roof of the tympanic cavity and the tympanic antrum, which is basically part of your ear. This middle cranial fossa is linked up to the ear mostly, right? Uh, that's the bone that is lying here. Therefore, any damage to the middle cranial fossa will be presented by a bleeding or the leakage of CSF from the ears. 
but let's talk about the boundaries of it so uh, the anterior boundary of the middle cranial fossa is formed by the posterior boundary of the anterior cranial fossa posterior border of the lesser wing of the sphenoid you can see and then the anterior clenoid processes and then your uh, sulcus chiasmaticus posterior boundary includes superior border of the petrous temporal bones and medially by the dorsum cellae laterally it is formed by the greater wing of the sphenoid some part of the parietal bone and finally the squamous part of the temporal bone the floor of the middle cranial fossa is formed by the body of the sphenoid bone in the median plane and laterally it is formed by the by the greater wing the squamous part of the temporal bone and the anterior surface of the petrous temporal bone Apart from that, we saw in this, there was the sulcus chiasmaticus, which was leading to the optic canal. Uh, then we had this structure called the cella tersica in the median plane, the tuberculum cellae, which uh, laterally extended to the middle clenoid processes. Uh, below that, we had this fossa called the hypophyseal fossa, lodged the pituitary gland, and posteriorly the dorsum cellae. This entirely is constituting the cella tersica. Then we talked about the lateral area. Firstly, the superior orbital fissure and the structures and contains divided into the lateral, middle and medial with the LFTs, is NOA and the IS structures. Uh, then we talked about the greater wing of sphenoid consisting of few foramens, uh, starting from foramen rotundum lodging the maxillary nerve, foramen ovale lodging the male structures, MALE, posterolateral to that foramen spinosum lodging the, the MM structures. Posteromedial to these we have foramen lacerums. And then after the foramen last one, we talked about the petrous temporal bone. It's apex going posterior. We had the trigeminal cave lodging the trigeminal ganglion. We have this arcuate eminence. And just anterolateral to that is the tegment tympani part of the temporal bone. And two grooves and hiatus for the greater petrusal nerve medially and lat uh, lesser petrusal nerve laterally. With that, uh, our middle cranial fossa has come to an end. In the next video, we'll talk about the posterior cranial fossa. So guys, stay tuned. Thank you so much for watching.